Ali Abbat, thank you so much for sitting down with Forbes. Thank you for having me. You are an actor, a producer, an entrepreneur, an environmentalist. Really? When did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> when did all these things happen? <laughs> I thought that's what I was going to ask you. That's what your team told me. Do you, do you identify with all four titles or do you feel like you're one over the others? Um, actor, entrepreneur, producer, environmentalist. Yeah, I think I uh, definitely connect with all of them. Most of all, I think um, just... I think I'm, I would like to believe I'm just a kind human being. <laughs> just a kind human being. Yeah. I'm sure the kindness infuses everything you do. What were you called to first? Acting. Acting. Yeah. yeah. Um, it started off ever before I knew anything about movies being like a thing that happened as a job. I just remember um, as a little girl sitting in front of the television and loving what was happening inside the television. So I would spend hours just looking at, you know, people dancing, you know, Bollywood movies, Hindi movies, there's a lot of song and dance and I was very attracted to all that. Um, so for me, it started off just as like an interest and a curiosity as to, wow, it's so cool that they can dance around the road and the trees and the mountains and nobody's stopping them. Like, why can't I do that in <laughs> real life? Like, why can't I get off this car right now and start dancing in the middle of the road? I used to never understand it. So it, it was very simple. Um, and of course, then with time, I realized that A, um, it's a profession and B, that my family is also a part of that same profession. My father was a director, producer. My mother's been an actor. Um, my half sister was an actor, producer, is an actor, producer. So the reality of it being a profession came on much later, but the love sort of happened at first sight. I've often wondered why we can't just dance in the streets and on the mountains. And we can actually. I mean, we might get, you know, fined or something. We can if we want to. Now, you sound humble in talking about it, but every theatrical release of yours in the last two years has been among the top five in the box office. That's not an easy feat. Hmm. How do you think about picking the work that you do? Are you driven by that commercial success or are you striving for your artistic freedom and it just happens to be commercially successful? I have to be very honest. Initially, it was just like whatever was being offered to me, I was doing. Hmm. Um, and it, it just so happened. And that's why I feel like luck has a huge part to play in things panning out for you beautifully. I feel like it just can't all be things that you decide to do. There's a little bit of luck and things being offered also at that same time. The roles and the parts and the films that were coming to me were all very different from one another. There was a love story. There was like a serious, um, you know, a drama speaking about um, drug addiction. There was um, a sort of coming of age um, girl going on a journey, discovering herself, facing her past and, you know, hard truths. So these, these different, different films. So they were, commo they were commercial, typical sort of love story films as well. But there were also these challenging parts that were coming my way. Um, or that I was maybe also seeking out. Because I think as an actor and the kind of person that I am, um, I get bored very easy. Hmm. So I can't do the same thing again and again. So I, I, I'm always wondering what I can do next especially what I can do next that people would not, people would not expect me to do. Um, so initially the choices were sort of like, yeah, I'll do this, I'll do that. Come on, just keep the work coming, just keep working, just keep working. But they, they just happen to be different. And then I think over the last maybe three, four years, you know, minus the pandemic in the middle, there was okay, uh, some, some sort of mindfulness that, okay, I think this is, this, this, is the, this is the film that I'm feeling like most at this moment, so I'll choose this. Um, and sometimes maybe not even feeling a film, but choosing it because something's just making sense, you know, mm. some energy is just aligning. So, yeah, I don't think there's a clear formula. Um, I'm a very instinctive person. How have you learned to listen to that instinct? Because I think it can be hard for people. And I know we went to service day at a local high school to kick off the summit. And one of the students asked, uh, we had Shania Twain talk to the music students. And she said, my producer wants me to do this, but I want to do that. And it can be hard to listen to your gut when you have industry people Absolutely. telling you one thing. So how have you developed that? It's just that I'm, I'm not much of a procrastinator. Um, I'm very impulsive. So if something just 
if I want to do something, it's almost like I can't help but do it. Like it's like if I would not do it, there would be something wrong. And even if I instinctively sometimes feel something like, okay, this is something I'd like to connect with, uh, that I connect with in this in this moment. Um, if I have to ever give it too much thought, it means that it's not for me. And very often, yes, that has happened with me where people must have said that, you know, I don't, why are you making this decision or are you sure this is the right thing for you to do? Um, but I'm like, yeah, I mean, I have to live with it. So I need to be on that set every day and I do need to be 100% convinced. And if I'm not convinced that I'm doing, I'm actually a disservice to the project. I'm a, I'm a disservice to the film and that the authenticity or the lack of honesty will show in my eyes. And someone once told me that, I actually asked a very, you know, um, favorite filmmaker of mine, SS Rajamoli, who made RRR, he and m countless other films, but that was the film that we worked on together for a short while. And um, I was, we were on set and I asked him, I said, how do you think actors should choose films if they want to be, because very early on my goal was like, I just want to be the most loved person in the world. That was sort of very simple sort of understanding, uh, especially, you know, for the movies that I do and for the characters that I play. And he said, there's no formula, just whatever you do, you just do it with love. Mm -hmm. Because even if the film doesn't work, the love in your eyes will connect with the audience. And eventually that's what you, you look for, is to build a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your audience. And today when I meet people, someone comes up to me and talks to me about my work or even just says hi, I, I feel like they know me. And if, they, if they like my work, that is, if they don't like my work, then they will not say hi. <laughs> but if they like my work, I feel like they know me and I know them. It's nice to make connections with audiences and you are expanding your audience. You made your English language debut yes. last year. Yes. What was that experience like? Because you've been very, very big and successful in the Indian film industry. Yeah. What's, I don't know if I can call it, is it a crossover? What's the transition been like? <laughs> I don't think it's a transition. I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, I think it, it was always on my bucket list, I think, to do um, an English language movie, to do a Hollywood movie, um, as it would be, you know, on my bucket list to do a Telugu movie like I did with RRR. I think for me, it's more about just broadening my horizon. My father always told me, um, if you're the most intelligent person in a room, get a new room. And what he meant was that if you've kind of comforted your space and if you just feel like, this is something that you can do really well. You need to push yourself outside your comfort zone. And that was uh, a little scary um, experience for me, um, you know, making my Hollywood debut in such a massive film um, headlined by Gal Gadot, who's, you know, a fantastic, massive star and a great actor, great human being. Um, also, it came with its own challenge because I was pregnant at the time. Uh, so shooting an action film, pregnant, first Hollywood film, it was like, okay, a lot to take at one time. But when I look back at the experience, I'm really glad that I did it because I think I, um, yeah, I, I feel like it was so different from what I was doing in India for the last 10, 11 years. And, and it just maybe hopefully opened up a new horizon. It sounds like such a new experience because it's Hollywood debut and you're pregnant. So yeah. in some ways you have the benefits of just being a beginner. <laughs> yeah, in, in, every, in every possible way. Yeah. <laughs> what was your biggest learning in that experience? Um, see, film sets all over the world, in my opinion, are the same because it's the same energy, working towards the same vision, trying to get the day in, trying to execute. Uh, what was different is actually I, I kind of, because in India, after working with maybe the same people again and again, you have a certain team with hair and makeup and, you know, um, manager and like you have a certain team that you create and that you can rely on all the time and it's your comfort zone and it just becomes very familiar territory. This was supreme, supremely unfamiliar territory because it was just me, you know, with a completely new team, with a completely new set things happening so somewhat in the same way, but some things are a little different culturally. So I think my biggest learning was just that I'm like, I, I by myself, like I'm not really dependent on other people mm -hmm. to get things done. I can do things on my own. I can travel on my own. I can do things on my own. And sometimes when you're so used to a certain way, um, of working, you feel like you can't. That becomes like your crutch, you know, like an emotional crutch or all mm -hmm. of that. Um, so I really got, I felt like I got rid of those crutches. 
And that has to help you in entrepreneurship because you founded your own conscious clothing company, yeah. Edamama. Yes. What was the driving force and inspiration there? Again, so it's um, quite strange, but it, so it happened, I think, five six seven years into me being an actor and I made a bunch of money that I was like okay confident that I can put money into maybe starting a brand or something so my team and I um, we did some research and I just instinctively felt that do we need another fashion label for women there's so many labels out there right now what's what's going to be special about this I, I don't want people to buy a product just because my name is attached to it because that's, there's no authentic storytelling there and um, I, I didn't really have, I was also, also very clear about what kind of clothes even I like to wear in my life, mm-hmm. let alone create a brand. Uh, so I asked for them to, you know, look for the gap in the market and it turns out that there, at that time there was a dearth of an actual homegrown children's clothing brand made in India. Um, and I was like, okay, that, that's it. Because simultaneously, again, I think that luck has such a huge part to play in this. I was working on a storybook, an idea of stories, a um, series of stories books, which is not out yet, hopefully this year, of a little girl and her dog, Ed, and uh, them going on these adventures, um, talking to the trees and talking to the animals. And basically, I feel like, Um, Influence starts very young in children, so if you can nurture in love, a love of nature within children, they become the future planeteers, Mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, So it just made complete sense, I said this is what we need to do, we need to make a children's clothing, clothing wear brand, a conscious clothing wear brand, um, where through our storytelling, through our fabrics, through the um, themes of the clothes and through the general look and feel we teach kids to really love their planet like you know we started selling seed balls with each and every garment that was sold Um, so you plant the seed ball and you have a beautiful plant it's an activity for you know parent and child to do together as well so that's how that started and um, lo behold we launched right in the middle of the pandemic and it's doing pretty well. You, uh, in September 2023, entered into a joint venture with Reliance Retail, which is India's biggest yeah. retailer. How yeah. did that come about? And what was that process like? Um, it was a very natural kind of marriage. Um, I, was, I am and um, I still am and was very protective of Ed. Um, as my, my brand is my first baby. I don't think I'm somebody who can say, I know business or understand business. I haven't studied. I studied till the 12th grade and I started working at the age of 18. Um, But what I did know was how to tell a story. And Edamama at its core is now it's, I mean, it started off as a children's clothing brand, but now we're slowly turning it into a lifestyle brand where we have, you know, launching different categories from personal care to, um, you know, um, uh, non-apparel and clothes and, you know, we widened our range as well so for that i needed i needed a partner um who would be able to put that might behind ed because till then it was all self-funded um it was my venture and my capital (laughs) so um this was a moment where i just needed expertise i needed a i needed uh someone to really take my vision as its own and build it you know even further and um i'm so glad that we found a partnership with reliance uh, Isha Ambani and I um, are also um, very good friends and we both happen to give birth around the same time. Our kids are, uh, my daughter and her twins are a week apart. Wow. Yeah. So uh, it all also happened at the same time where suddenly we were like both of us mothers and having a very different, now my whole perspective on Ed as a brand was so personal. It was just like coming from here as opposed to just looking at it as a business venture. Uh, so it all happened beautifully, literally at the same time. Do you feel like being a mother has made you a better entrepreneur or a better uh, steward of Ed? I think being a mother has just made me a better everything. Uh, but especially with Ed, yeah, because I think now my my needs are coming from a more personal perspective. And I mean, I become more of like a consumer 
then gen- then the then the then the force behind the brand because mm-hmm. now I'm also looking at the product as a consumer right. that I wouldn't use that or I wouldn't put that on my baby no but I would definitely try that I think we need to make more of this so I'm like noting everything down for each and every age group from like what toys like she likes and like you know e- even all the little little things that I see children um or my daughter observe making notes of all of that and putting that into the brand so the joint venture was announced in September 2023 are they investors only or what are the what's the reality 6 months later no so they hold a majority stake okay. 51 um and um the reality 6 months later is that yeah we we're gearing up for a massive year of lots of different different uh, category launches starting with storytelling as i told you because we that the idea started from there um so june is when we drop the first set of books um which hopefully in life i'm hoping even becomes like an animation series um then we have our ebos going live for the first time ever um, ebo stores oh stores yeah because till now we've only been in selling online and maybe a couple of pop ups here and there uh, but the ebos will really be able to give you that first hand experience of the the edamama experience of entering the store and feeling like my brief was you should not feel like you're inside somewhere you should still feel like you're outside um okay. so stuff like that and uh, then personal care and toys and non apparel and all of that so you have big plans i was going to ask i i'd like to ask every interviewee here if we were to speak a year from now what would you wish to be able to report to me either ed has done or you have done in your career yeah i think a year from now all these categories launching <laughs> under it i don't know how i'm so nervous because i'm like it should it all sort of merge into one another i want each of them to have their moment in in the sun um but yeah big plans for a, for the next year and what about what about you personally or professionally but Pro- professionally um i have i have a movie releasing this year um uh, in september that i am co-producer on it's my second venture as a producer very different from what i did the first time um but at at its heart um it has what our production company stands for which is just impactful storytelling which leads into a conversation much after you've actually viewed the film uh so that is the intention that film is called jigra it releases in september I love impactful storytelling and sometimes I go into the movie feeling like I should have done more research before sitting down but then I end up thinking about it for months afterwards. I actually think that that's nice that there's no research because you should go into it, it you should be able to experience I mean unless it's like a part 2 or a part 3 <laughs> but you should be able to experience the film without being told anything just from frame 1 to to the end frame. What do you hope people take from this film? From Jigra It's a very different film from what I've done in the past. Um so it's something okay I'll, I'll give you a little hint because I don't want to speak too much about the film but at the time I signed Jigra it was just after I'd given birth a couple of months like 4 months. So I was feeling very protective. Something about me was feeling like um I was just like you know in tigress mode wanting to protect my my cub. So um Jigra is all about protecting your mm-hmm. loved ones. Final question. You were on the 30 under 30 Asia list in 2017. Is being under 30 or was being under 30 at the time an advantage or disadvantage in your line of work? And if so, in either case, why? Mm. I mean, it's great to be under 30 so you can make it to one of these lists <laughs> because <laughs> the pool becomes smaller. Uh but uh 20s I was just talking about it the other day it was, it was a chaotic time I think I was like doing too many things I'm way more comfortable in my 30s I'm just turning 31 in a week uh gotten way more into my skin but I have to say and I've always said this I really genuinely believe age is just a number but what comes with time is just great confidence with yourself and who you are and um, being unapologetic I think when you're younger especially when you're working and there's so many people around you you constantly apologetic for some reason um so i'm still not like i'm like some pompous person now. i think i'm still humble and and grounded and down to earth but i'm i'm i've become very unapologetic of who i am today it's excellent note to end on aliabat thank you so much for talking to us today thank you so much